coming up in today's vlog on the Oxford Canal. We find out about the man who made rugby famous. He had caught the ball and rather than retiring, which he was supposed to do, he proceeded to rush forwards. We enjoy our first cruise of the year. That's sausages, sausages egg, egg, black pudding, black pudding yeah. bacon, I don't know, it was massive. And there's a dilemma as we approach the locks. We're going to hopefully get through the Hillmorton locks. Now we've been told they were closed. Hello. Hiya. How welcome. We're back. <laughs> did you miss us? No. Oh no, somebody else says that, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, did you miss us? Thank you very much. Before we go any further, to all of you new subscribers that joined us at the end of 2022. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we love every single one of you. Honest, honest seriously. Um, love to meet you all. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Can we hire somewhere and we we'll all get together and have a party? What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you for all of that thank you for all the likes thank you for all the views and watching all the stuff but above all thank you for those people who've been concerned about where we've been for the last couple of months yeah thanks um you, oh, that sounded very sincere jan oh we're okay <laughs> well no thank you honestly yeah seriously thank you very much uh we I haven't been vlogging for various reasons uh we're not going to bore you with all the details but suffice to say uh some of it was health uh, a lot of it was to do with family issues, which are now being resolved, thankfully. Yeah, no problems. No but no, problems. no problems. No uh, health-wise, I've got a bad back. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Well, at least it's not man flu. No, seriously, I've done me back in, put in some new toggly things in the crutch cover and because it was blowing in the wind uh, anyway I'm not going to bore you with all that and I malarkey. have got big news you've got big news have you I'm not an Elsan virgin anymore oh no <laughs> <laughs> no she knows how to do the Elsan now yeah. uh, but there we go so you're not just an Elsan virgin yeah. oh no she's done everything she's all been right. very helpful thank you very supportive is Jam and thank you very much dear you're welcome sweetheart i love and you oh love you too oh no shut up man. what a tender moment no <laughs> anyway where are we going well we're going to get to rugby today we're going to hopefully get through the hillmorton locks now we've been told they were closed but a little birdie mm, a little birdie tells us that one of them is still open and we can get through can we get through the Hillmorton locks? We'll find out a little bit later on. But, I hear you ask, where are you going this year for your cruising? Well, we've done a lot of southern things. We went to Wales a couple of years ago and done the Langothlin. Oh yeah, it is now, year before last. Yeah, Blimey. two years. Uh, so we thought we'd go back up north. A lot of this journey that you're gonna see over the next few weeks we've done before, however, we're going to be adding certain things that we didn't add previously. So there's going to be a lot more history. Uh, <laughs> Just take more, more time and, and more up and go and see places. Yeah, we've done a couple of bits where we've gone in and looked at towns and, and villages and everything else. We're going to do a lot more of that and a lot more of the history behind it. You're doing a lot more of a lot more. I'm going to sounds, do a lot more, I know, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I'm going to be very busy. I'm going to, I'm going to be making up for lost time. <laughs> anyway, in the meantime, let's head towards Hillmore. relatively quiet on the canal at the moment. I mean, it is February. We're coming up to, is it half term? Do they have half term in February? Can't remember. Our kids are not at school anymore, so I don't keep up to date with it, but I'm sure there was a half term in February. 
but our intel further up the canal is that it is relatively quiet at the moment. Having said that, I'll bet you there'll be half a dozen boats coming the opposite way in a minute. <laughs> After this bridge in front of us, we come up to a section known as the Barbie Strait. Mainly because it's straight and it goes past a village called Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes common sense is the best way, isn't it, really? <laughs> Remember what I said about being quiet on the canal at the moment? There's a boat coming. <laughs> See, I spoke too soon, didn't I? At least we've met him on the straight, that's the main thing. Hi. Good morning. You can see all sorts of wildlife and animals on the canal, in the fields. Obviously there are cows and sheep and horses. And just near here, between Braunston and Hill Morton, there's an equestrian centre with a viewing platform that you can go and have a look at the horses. So we did. Where are we, Joe? Only, spelt only. Only. Equestrian centre. And it's fabulous. It's got um, cafe. It's got farm shop, Trickles farm shop. Um, other little shops. And it's got the massive equestrian centre. At the moment, on one half of it, they are doing horse jumping. And then they're going through to the next part of it. And there's competition going on. It's very cold. But it's lovely, very nice. English, and we've got Paul Kaplan still. Oh, that's... What do you reckon? Have you seen the gas out? Cream. Ooh. Not death by chocolate, death by cream. Right? Who makes the cakes? We do. Oh my god. Yeah, we make everything that's in the chiller all ourselves. Yeah, we do it all here in house. I've got to get one yeah. to share. Really? No. That was very passive aggressive. Yeah. In, uh, no, <laughs> yeah. I don't do sharing. <laughs> Not when cakes. <coughs> all all, all Sco uh, Scotch eggs are involved. Lovely horses, weren't they? Oh, they're beautiful. I'm not a horsey person, no. but you know, they were just absolutely beautiful. And the size of those Scotch eggs. <laughs> they were They were nearly the size of my head. Yeah, humongous. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. We had a breakfast one, didn't we? Yes. And we shared that. I think we got four what, lunches out of what that. What was in that? Sausages, <laughs> Sausages egg, egg, black pudding, black pudding yeah. bacon. I don't know, it was massive. It was a breakfast. <laughs> breakfast in a ball. Pardon? Yes, you heard me. None of that. Anyway, forwards and onwards. Shepherd's Hut.
This morning has got its own tree house, look. It'd be great for when the kids come round. Hillmorton Wharf, quite a busy little place. With a pub next to it. Right, here we are at the top of Hill Morton Locks. Jan's got to get into her rhythm again. As you can see, hopefully, there are two single locks side by side. So at busy periods, obviously you can get two boats down at a time. All meant to speed up the traffic, of course. Now these two are okay, it's not these two that are being, well obviously you can see there's no work going on. It'll be when we get a bit further down. It's actually the bottom locks. So there's three locks, or six if you like. <laughs> three locks. And I think it's the bottom lock. The first locks we've done this year. Well, hey. And I have to tell you, it's not easy when you've got a bad back. And normally I would be, before you say anything, I would normally be jumping off like a stallion and pushing these lock gates back. But I'm afraid I am doing nothing at the moment. It's bad enough steering. If you've got a trad stern, you'll know that sometimes you, well, I find it's easier to actually stand slightly at an angle uh, which doesn't do the bottom of your back any good but that's where I've hurt me back so yeah the painkillers are working just Stop I'm a bloke we always moan if we get a cold it's full-blown flu Am I clear? Uh, yeah you're all cleared on If you remember me saying earlier on that these locks are the busiest on the entire 2,000 miles of canal network, there are actually 7,734 lockages in 2022. 7,734 times these locks were used. And Tomston Lock on the Shroppy. Well, it's on the Middlewich branch of the Shoppy. 7,414. There we go. Quite an achievement. I wonder if it'll hit 8,000 this year. Right, so that's those two locks done. Now I know that there's two boats moored up on the lock landing, but that's fine because Jan, as you can probably, well, we'll just about see, coming on your left hand side of the screen is already off the boat and walk into that lock and it's funny enough it's that lock on the left hand side that is the only one that's in operation they managed to put the Harris fence in around lock three I don't know if you can see it we'll see it a bit better when we get closer we 
if you're ever down this way. Nice cafe, this. Especially the breakfast. I think that's a prerequisite. Any cafe by the canal has got to do a good boat as breakfast. And it's going to take a bit of time because there's only one paddle working. The other paddle is inside where the Harris fencing is, so it's fenced off for use, so you're relying on one paddle. It just means it takes a little bit longer. see any of that obviously the Harris fencing is in the way so and there's obviously the safety fencing as well for the workers that's the yellow stuff so what's going on here we will also be carrying out repair works to the lock ladders and coping stones so the bottom and the top gates are going to be replaced so we can see the original gates are still there yeah I am Now looking at it from here, I think we can see that the bottom gates are already in. I'm not sure if you can just make out the lock gates. In fact, I'm not sure if they're actually the new... Oh, there might be the new lock gates, I don't know. Obviously they're going to be doing the stonework and the ladders first. I think the ladders are already in. The noise you can hear uh, is the pump, uh, pumping the water from below the lock and it comes out above the lock so it keeps the lock chamber nice and dry. Now all I've got to do is pick her up. Well done, three locks, that's it for a while. Oh, we've got a little one, haven't we, to do? That, but that's not for a while yet. That Sutton Stop, or Hawkesbury Junction, as it's otherwise known. Clifton Wharf to our right. I think Clifton, Clifton Narrowboats. Well, we've moored up here in Rugby. It's a popular little spot because just ahead of us, you can't see it, just over there is uh, Tesco and all the B&M's and supermarkety things and stuff and there's a water point opposite not that we need any but if you were stopping here you've got a water point so yeah you're not in the town centre you're just outside about a mile or so but I think well certainly on the opposite side it's only one day more in on this side I would imagine there's no signs up so 14 days but we're just here for one night Maybe a bit of a clue to where we're going. Uh, 
as you cruise through Rugby, you'll no doubt notice that bridges suddenly get changed number-wise, and there's little arms going off left and right, here, there and everywhere. That's because when James Brindley, the famous canal builder, built this part of the Oxford Canal, he was conscious to send the canal into all the little villages and all the areas where there was some light industry, agriculture, manufacturing, that sort of thing. Rugby, at the time the canal was built, uh, wasn't very prosperous at all. Far from being the sprawling metropolis it is now, it was actually quite a small little place and it was down to the canals that rugby owes a lot of its success. That, and of course, a certain sport. Until the arrival of the canals in the 1770s, the rugby area was rural with only traditional village industries such as corn milling and blacksmithing. The area wasn't big enough to support any of the agricultural engineering industries that existed in larger market towns. The area's limestone and gravel was probably exploited on a small scale for local use. The lime industry developed once the canal could bring in fuel and distribute the burnt lime to a larger area. But Rugby the Town is probably most famous for the game that bears its name and the story behind the man who invented it. Probably. It all starts here at Rugby College. What is certain is that William Webb Ellis was a pupil at Rugby School, attending here from 1816 to 1825. But despite living long enough to see the sport in which he allegedly had a pivotal role become played across the British Isles, he never claimed any glory. He left rugby school to attend Oxford University before joining the church. He died in 1872 in Menton in France, where his grave is a place of pilgrimage for passing rugby teams. It was not until after his death in the late 1870s that his legend was born when old rugbyans started to look back at the history of their game and invited ex-pupils to write in with their recollections. With many now around 80 years old and with memories likely quite hazy, only one letter returned with anything substantive. Matthew Bloxham, a local antiquarian, wrote saying that the change from kicking to a handling game originated with a boy called Webb Ellis. He embellished on this story in a second letter by stating that William Webb Ellis had caught the ball and rather than retiring, which he was supposed to do, he proceeded to rush forwards with it. And so, according to legend, the birth of the sport known as rugby began. The game, its history and the making of the balls which developed from round to oval to make it easier for them to be carried can be found here at the Webb Ellis Museum in Rugby, right opposite the very school where it was invented. This is the original football jersey or rugby football jersey that belonged to this guy here called D. Callahan. But look how tiny it is, and he was a rugby player. Yeah, because you, you often think of them as being big burly fans, don't you? Well, of course you do, but they weren't in. in... Look at him, there's the photo. Right. The famous it. Webb Ellis Cup presented to the winners of the Rugby World Cup every four years. This cup was presented to the winners of an annual game that took place between the Rugby Lions and Menton during the early 1970s. What have you found, John, with all these ties? Well, my parents used to live in Fishguard, which was next, at the nearest, about 15 miles away, was a place called Haverford West. Yeah. Know it well. And they've got a rugby tie there. Because they've got a rugby team, presumably. Yeah. Well, they're Welsh, so. It's not changing over a century, look. There's a video in the museum of John Batchelor, who's been a rugby ball stitcher since 1948. Born in Rugby on the 18th of August 1933, John was apprenticed at the James Gilbert workshops in 1948 as a stitcher and apart from a decade working in the RAF, he's been employed on this site by James Gilbert and now Webb Ellis Limited ever since. Over the years he's been involved in the production of six and eight panel leather balls, 
the synthetic ball as well as footballs and in the repair of leather sporting items such as boxing gloves. Since the late 1980s John has been a regular feature in the museum, giving him the chance to meet many of the famous faces that have passed through its doors, including Cliff Morgan, Willie John McBride, Jonah Lomu and Martin Johnson. He's even met members of royalty including the Crown Prince of Thailand. From time to time, John can still be seen in the museum continuing his trade and welcoming visitors from all over the world. A variety of factors contributed to the evolution of the rugby ball's shape, but one of the most notable had to do with the health concerns for the ball's creators. Pig bladders were blown up in their green state using the stem of a clay pipe. Since the pump had not yet been invented, lung power was the only means by which to blow up the balls. In fact, William Gilbert became famous for his lung power. Blowing up pig's bladders using one's lungs, however, presented a real danger. As you can imagine, pig bladders were not the most sterile of inflatables, and it was not unheard of to contract lung diseases from them. At the time, this could very well be a death sentence for anyone unlucky enough to fall ill. First came the rubber bladder to replace the pig bladder, but it was soon deemed too difficult to blow up. After seeing an ear syringe, Richard Linden, the inventor of the rubber bladder, took the same basic design and created a hand air pump from which the standard for inflating balls for decades to come was invented. Oh, what? Sorry, so this is a pig bladder. So which it's is a pig used... bladder, which uh, prior to the, the, the leather rugby balls, I used to use a fresh pig bladder and it would be inflating rope. <laughs> I still get a thrill going under bridges. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, absolutely gorgeous. Some of these bridges are really well built. They've stood the test of time. Unfortunately, some of them don't stand the test of cars and lorries hitting them. But the brickwork, oh, you just got to admire the, the engineers of the day and everybody who built them or was involved in the construction. Fantastic. Anyway, today we're not going to go far. My back is still giving me jip, as they say. We're going to pop into somewhere that we used to moor up. Now, before you all say, well, I thought you all hated that company. Well, we've had apologies. We understand that everybody's been retrained. So this is just a call out to all those boaters who watch the channel. We've been assured that there's some new procedures in place for booking into Limehouse from Teddington so if you are going to go on the tidal Thames from Teddington to Limehouse lock whether you're going to moor up there for the night or whether you're carrying on your journey can you let us know how things progress be interested to see how their new training and everything else is working out fingers crossed it's all good sounds like it anyway which is positive if a positive can come from a negative, then somebody's doing something right and we're moving forward, aren't we? It's just unfortunate it was us that got the negative. <laughs> but there you go, if our mishaps can fuel something to be made better, then that's got to be good, surely. And also, I must mention that if you do want to do the title and you're a little bit reticent or scared, nervous, whatever, and that's quite understandable, uh, it was for the first time we ever did it in Sapphire several years ago. The St Pancras Cruising Club do organise regular cruises uh, and you don't have to just do Limehouse to uh, Teddington. You can do Limehouse uh, out to all sorts of places, up to the barrier. Get hold of the St Pancras Cruising Club and they'll let you know when their next meetup is going to be. Basically, you go out as a flotilla, which is great, because then you're not doing it on your own, and I don't think you feel as, what's the word, not scared, because you shouldn't feel scared about these things, but then at least if anything happens, there are some other people alongside you that can give you a hand and give you some support. We've never been out with them, but we've heard so many good things about them that, you know, they're worth rec definitely worth recommending. Anyway, on the canal, you don't really need the help of a cruising club, you just need eyes in the back of your head. <laughs> oh, 
We're going up to New Bold Tunnel. One of the shortest, I think. So it is single boats only. You can't get two boats down here. Well, you might be able to. <laughs> You've got to breathe in. I can see the end of the tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. It's just a large bridge, really. What happens when we get to the other side of the tunnel? Watch next time to find out. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up for a like. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, it's free to do so. And then when you have subscribed, press the bell icon. Ding! Thank you, Jan. And YouTube will let you know next time we upload a vlog. In the meantime, stay safe, happy cruising. Thanks to everybody for subscribing, liking and commenting. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!